Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. I uh, just ran into a couple of technical difficulties, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to the second webinar for Cincinnati Gives. Uh, my name is Lisa, and I am the Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. We also have Ivy here from Cincinnati Magazine as well. Uh, so today, a couple of things that we'll be going over. Uh, first, we'll be going over fundraising challenge basics. Uh, so for those of you that were not able to attend the first webinar, we'll be going over just some key information uh, that you should know for the challenge this year. We'll also go, be going over leaderboard prizes and rules. And then we'll get into the strategy portion of the training session, which is the goal setting, matching grants, peer-to-peer, -peer, marketing and promotion, follow-up, resources available to you, and Q&A. Um, so I'll also, before I begin, I am just going to let Ivy jump in here um, and introduce herself as well. To, uh, hello, I'm Ivy. I'm the publisher of Cincinnati Magazine. I think I've probably talked to uh, most of you, but I'm just so thrilled to be launching our fifth annual Cincinnati Gives Challenge and Guide to Giving. Um, we have had great response so far with over 50 area organizations register for the challenge, and I believe close to 30 uh, make the decision to participate in the guide to giving. So I encourage you to utilize all the tools and tricks and resources we have available to you that Lisa will go over in detail. Uh, they're also all on the site, but please don't hesitate to ever uh, reach out to me or uh, the support team at Mighty Cause. We want this to be as successful as possible for all of you. So um, many of you have my contact information. It can be found at cincinnatimagazine.com. And I just wish you all the best and please reach out if there's anything you may need. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Ivy. Uh, and yes, there is a, at the end, we'll answer any questions you have. If you have any questions about this, um, anything I've said in the training session. So there is a questions um, area in your GoToWebinar control panel. So at the end, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down there and we'll go over those at the end. Great, so to begin, uh, let's go over some challenge basics for Cincinnati Gives. So the challenge will start on November 30th and will end on December 10th. They both start and end at 5 p.m. So please make sure to just uh, make sure that you're telling donors that uh, they should start donating after 5 p.m. or before 5 p.m. on December 10th. And if you haven't done so already, registration for Cincinnati Gives ends on December, um, November 24th. So if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you are registering your organization uh, before then. If you haven't registered yet, you want to head over to CincinnatiGives.org. That's where you'll find the primary call to action to register. And once you've registered and you've logged in as an administrator, uh, you can utilize your organization dashboard to manage your organization and review and set up key information for your nonprofit. Uh, the dashboard is divided up into key areas, your overview reports, fundraising and settings. And as I said, that's where you're going to find all of your management and editing tools. Something that we're gonna be going over in more detail a little later on in this webinar is the story that you're telling this year for Cincinnati Gives. Um, so as a new nonprofit or returning nonprofit, your organization profile is going to be where you're going to send donors to make a donation for your organization. So you wanna think about uh, what you want to say and what you want to relay to your donors this year as to why they should make a donation for your organization. Some, key, some reminders as to key things that you want to review and set up this year. 
first being your checkout flow. So once a donor selects the donate button, they'll be taken to the checkout form and you can actually edit the suggested donation levels and descriptions that are available on the checkout form. Um, as well within the checkout flow section of your dashboard, there is an area to customize your post checkout experience. So once a donor makes their donation, they receive a thank you page and an email receipt. Uh, well, you can provide a thank you message on that page as well as within the email. Um, so if you have done this previously, you wanna make sure that you're going into your checkout flow and make sure that everything is updated for this year and that the language is updated to 2020, et cetera. If you're new, you wanna check out this area um, and see what type of information you wanna to relate to donors once they've made a donation, or maybe share more information about the impact their donation can make by setting up suggested levels and descriptions. As well, on your organization profile, uh, you can reset profile metrics or set up profile metrics this is the donation amount that you see and maybe a thermometer if you've set up a goal amount. Um, if you have that set up, you'll want to make sure that you update your start date and set it to November 30th at 5 p.m. when donations start calculating. Um, so you want to make sure that the don donation number that you're sharing there is going to be the start of the challenge. Um, and if you have any questions about that, again, please feel free to reach out to our support team as well. Um, you, this was covered in the first webinar on getting started, uh, but feel free to ask us any questions about resetting any of this information. Okay, so now that we've gone through some just basic information, some of it that was already on the previous webinar, we're gonna just also go over the prizes and rules for this year's Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Something new that we've added to the platform that's really exciting is the ability for donors to donate via their bank account, make an ACH donation. Donors that are donating over $50 will have the option of choosing the payment method bank account. Uh, donors that choose uh, to make a donation via their bank account, uh, the fees for processing are actually a little bit lower. They're a 1% transaction fee plus a $1.50 fixed fee per transaction. So this is a really great opportunity for donors that are making large donations to your organization. Or if you do have um, a match grantor that is providing a large donation, this is a really great um, another payment method that they can utilize on the platform because it does have a lower transaction fee for the donor. Um, so again, only available for donors that are donating over $50 and they'll automatically see that option added as a payment method on the checkout form. So just to break down the grand prizes available on For Cincinnati Gives, first place will receive $10,000, second place will receive $6,000, third place will receive $4,000, and a fifth place will receive, I'm sorry, fourth place will receive 2,000 and fifth place will receive $1,000. Um, please note that all donations, if you wanna be eligible for the grand prize, you will need to have 10 unique uh, donors um, that have given to your organization throughout the challenge. And we'll get to that in a second. So in addition to the overall grand prize challenge, um, there's going to be additional bonus challenges that organizations can um, win throughout the Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Uh, so the first is your meet your match challenge. Um, so any organization that's set up a $500 or more uh, matching grant and has fulfilled that, uh, they become eligible to win $2,000. Uh, with the Giving Tuesday Challenge, those are only donations that are available for Giving Tuesday. And as well, organizations have the ability to win uh, $3,500. And then bonus challenge one through five will occur on each different days. And you have the opportunity to win um, the prize monies listed here based off the challenge listed on that day. And all of this is available 
in the rules and prize section of Cincinnati Gives. I've gone over already one of the rules uh, for the challenge. So one, you must be a 501c3 organization to participate in Cincinnati Gives. Uh, to be for participating organizations are eligible for one grand prize. So you can win the grand prize and two bonus challenges. Um, you cannot win more than two bonus challenges and the grand prize. Organizations cannot donate to themselves. Um, so to clarify this rule, uh, if you have a board member that wants to donate their own personal funds to your organization, they're more than, you know, they can totally do that. They're more than happy to do that. Uh, however, you cannot utilize your organization's funds to make a donation to your organization. As I mentioned before, you must have at least 10 unique donors to be eligible for the grand prize. You cannot have one donor um, make a $10,000 donation um, and be eligible for the grand prize. And as well, offline donations do not count towards prizes. Uh, so organizations can enter that on their page metrics so that you are reporting all of the donations you receive. However, those offline donations are not going to be counted towards overall leaderboards or prizes. Okay, now that we've gone through the basic information about the challenge, we're gonna get into the strategy portion of it. What your organization should start thinking about and planning so that you can have a successful Cincinnati Gives this year. Um, and so the first part is setting a goal. Uh, you want to make sure when you're participating in a challenge such as Cincinnati Gives that you're setting up a goal for your organization. Uh, the prizes are a great goal to work for, but you should also think about other goals that you want to set for your nonprofit um, so that you can have a successful Cincinnati Gives and a successful Giving Tuesday. So something you want to consider is setting a SMART goal. And a SMART goal is a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based goal. When you have a specific, measurable, realistic goal, then it's much easier for your organization to plan and strategize to meet your goal. So a SMART goal would be something like retain 40% of donors from 2019 or increase your total amount raised by $5,000. Those are very specific goals that you can um, specify for your organization. Um, something that is broad, such as raise money, engage people, those aren't going to be helpful for your nonprofit because they're not attainable. There's no um, number or there's nothing specific in there that you can work towards. So when you're thinking about the type of goals that you want to set up for your nonprofit, you want to make sure that they're realistic for your nonprofit. And the example I gave before, raise total amount raised by $5,000, for some organizations, that's very unrealistic. Um, and what would be a realistic goal is increase by $500. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your organization and look at the results from last year and see what would be realistic for your nonprofit, um, what is attainable for you. So head over to Cincinnati Gives, look at your donations report last year, look at your highest donor amount, your total donations, how many unique donors you've received so that you can create a goal from all of those stats. And most importantly, you wanna make sure that you're setting a goal that's meaningful for your organization. What's important for your organization right now? Not every organization is going to have the same goals uh, because there are some goals that are more important for other organizations. And for some organizations, setting a non-monetary goal is as equally important as a monetary goal um, because mo non-monetary goals are really great uh, milestones for your organization to reach that can be outside of just raising money. Um, so some examples of non-monetary goals that could be set for your organization is engaging in peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Maybe this is the first year you want people to fundraise for your nonprofit. You wanna activate your volunteers and your ambassadors. 
or maybe this is the first year if you've never done a matching grant before and you've never um, participated in, in that matching grant a bonus challenge that you want to secure your first matching grant so that you could um, possibly win that challenge or maybe this is the first year where your board of directors or your board members engage with Cincinnati Gives that they actively participate in, publicize your event. Um, each goal is going to be different for every nonprofit. So these are some things that you want to write down and think about so that you can have a successful Cincinnati Gives. Once you have your overall arching goals for the challenge and for your organization, map out your campaign with mini goals. Uh, mini goals are a great way to build your way to your overall goal. And also this is a really great marketing tool for your nonprofit uh, because you can share with donors then how close you are to your overall goal. Um, and this is a great way to have them feel excited and motivated and wanna help and participate during Cincinnati Gives. One of the things that's very um, oftenly overlooked is donor retention. So donors that have donated to your organization previously. Uh, because donors have donated to your organization previously, they're very likely to give again because they are familiar with your nonprofit. They've already uh, you know, made that pain point of going, going ahead and making a donation for the first time. Um, and they've made an impact for your nonprofit. So those people are more likely to donate again to your nonprofit. So a really great goal to think about is your donor retention um, and think about you know, how you can reach out to those donors and make a donation again and make an impact for your nonprofit again this year. Um, on the platform, there is a donor retention report available to you. So if you are a returning nonprofit, you've utilized the platform last year, uh, you can actually utilize this retention report to see how many donors that you're retaining this year. So you can actually pull up a list of your donors um, and this year to date, and you can see who you have not retained. And you can actually export the uh, list of individuals. And right there, you have a group of people that you can immediately contact uh, to, to just um, motivate to make a donation to your nonprofit. And we'll also talk about that in a little bit when it comes to marketing and emailing. So as you're composing your goals and you're thinking about how to get there with your mini goals, um, as I said, the leaderboard and the challenges are going to be a really helpful also guide for you. Um, so some quick leaderboard strategy that you want to think about is you always want to have your tabs open to the Cincinnati Gives homepage when Cincinnati begins um, so that you're also checking regularly in regards to your ranking, how your organization is doing um, compared to other organizations that are participating in Cincinnati Gives. Um, and why this is also beneficial, uh, let your donors know where you are, again, to your goals or to the challenge that you're trying to win. Let them know where you're where you stand and again, how much of an impact, what stakes you have at winning this, um, these challenges. Additionally, you wanna make sure that you're reviewing the prize structure and rules. Again, that's all available on the Cincinnati Gives website so that you know what day uh, each prize and each uh, challenge will be looking for. Unique donors, dollars raised, um, so that the strategy that you're composing for each day um, will match up to what the rules are for that challenge. Okay, so now that we've also gone over um, some key uh, strategies for starting your campaign, for setting your organization up for success, we're gonna be jumping into matching grants, which is a very common fundraising strategy nonprofits utilize. Um, and for Cincinnati Gives, there's actually a challenge that will help you with setting up a matching grant and motivate to, um, your donors to make a donation or even provide a match. 
So for those of you that are not familiar with matching grants, uh, matching grants is a marketing tool. It's a way to motivate donors to give immediately to your donation because donors feel like their donation goes farther because their donation is doubling um, or tripling depending on what type of matching grant that you've set up. Um, you want to make sure that you're setting up a matching grant before the event so that it's ready to go when the challenge starts. And a matching grant also is a really great strategy tool for meeting your fundraising goals and the different challenges available for Cincinnati Gives. So as I mentioned, some of the benefits of a matching grant, they act as a buy one, get one deal to inspire people to donate. They know that their donation is going to make a much larger impact for your organization. So not only does this incentivize donors to make a donation, but it also incentivizes them to make a larger donation. Maybe someone that was going to make a $5 donation is going to end up making a $25 donation because they know that their dollar is going to make a larger impact for your nonprofit. For Cincinnati Gives, the benefit of a match or grant, it also provides you the opportunity to win your Meet Your Match Challenge. So that's a really also additional great opportunity for your organization to receive extra grant money. Outside of just uh, motivating your donors to make a donation or make a larger donation, this is a really great stewardship opportunity. Sometimes there are volunteers, board members, or even large donors that are looking for opportunities to support your organization differently than they have before. Or maybe there is someone that you want to build a relationship with. You want them to um, participate in your organization. And this is a different way that someone could get involved and help your organization. And we've already spoken about the strategy point of how matching grants can really help motivate donors. So this is a really great opportunity to leverage a matching grant to climb the leaderboard. And of course, because it's um, so impactful, it's also a great marketing tool for your nonprofit. So who are some people that can provide a matching grant? This is a really common question we get uh, at Mighty Cause. Who should I reach out to? Well, I think one of the common things that people assume about matching grants is that they have to be provided by a company or a local business, something that someone who's incredibly professional, and that's not always the case. Um, a matching grant can really be provided by anyone. There's no rules when it comes to a matching grant and who could provide it. So a matching grant could be provided by a board member, a trustee. Um, sometimes there are organizations that their board has a total donation requirement, and I've seen a board members pool together to provide a grant for their organization. This could be a major donor. Maybe you have a donor that makes a large donation once a year, and this could be the opportunity that they make their donation make a larger impact. If you do work with any local businesses or sponsors, partners, this, this also could be an opportunity for them to work with your nonprofit and make an impact. And as well, this also can be a group of people. As I mentioned, your board members, but if you have volunteers, staff, anyone close to your organization that wants to pool um, funds together to provide a grant, they're more than, um, you know, they can definitely do that. And a matching grant doesn't have to be a large amount. Now for the Meet Your Match Challenge, it has to be $500. Um, and that can be your grant amount. It can be $500. It doesn't have to be an astronomical amount like $5,000. So how do you secure a matching grant? Um, how do you go about attaining a match? Well, you want to make sure that first you're composing a list of who could provide a match. So think about all those individuals that I listed and who in your inner circle, who's connected to your nonprofit that you could reach out to and ask to provide a grant for your organization. When you are composed a list of who you wanna reach out to, you wanna make sure that you're doing personal outreach, um, especially, you know, this, for Cincinnati Gives, there's an opportunity to win a challenge. So you wanna make sure that you're explaining to the person that you're speaking to 
one, what a matching grant is. For some people that are not in the nonprofit world, they may not be familiar with what a match is, um, and also the impact and the opportunity for you to win during Cincinnati Gives. Um, and as I mentioned, that's the really the last uh, portion of it, which is making that ask and explaining the impact that it will have for your nonprofit. So once you've received your match, um, you want to make sure that you're adding it to the platform. And there is a matching grant tool available for you to be able to add your match. Um, you can add your match through your dashboard. There is a section called fundraising. And then there is a subsection called matching grants. And that's where you would add your match to your match manager. When you create a match, you have the ability to add information on your match, such as you can add a logo, add a name or title of the match, the match value, and set your start date and time for your match as well. When you've completed your match um, and your start date begins, if you've set your match to start November 30th at 5 p.m., then when your match starts on your organization profile, you're going to have a sticker on your donate button that will tell donors that you have a matching grant that is live. And if a donor selects on that button, they'll also see information on that matching grant. So they can actually see how far you are into um, fulfilling your uh, match, how close you guys are to your goal, and also information on the individual who's providing the match if you are providing that information. Um, additionally, within the search, people will be able to filter the search to see all of the organizations that have a matching grant currently going on. So that is also another opportunity that donors can find your organization is using that match filter tool to see the organizations where donors can make a larger impact. Some quick match and grant uh, common questions that we get. Uh, does the match have to be processed online? So if you're, you know, whatever you've agreed upon with your grantor, there are a couple of things that you should just be cognizant of. No, the grant does not have to be filled online to the, on the platform. We're not tracking that. The tool is a display and reporting tool. So how the grantor wants to fulfill their grant that's totally up to you and the grantor. However, one thing to note is that offline donations do not count towards this challenge. So if your grantor is planning on making it a check donation, that match value will not be counted towards your overall leaderboard. So that is something to be very cognizant of when you're thinking about your matching grant and how it should be fulfilled. Um, so if possible, I would always highly recommend that your grantor fulfill that online so it does count towards your leaderboard. Do donations made to peer-to-peer -to -peer pages count towards the match? Uh, this is your choice. If you are using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages or you're having volunteers or board members fundraise for your organization on Cincinnati Gives, then you want to, uh, you can choose when you're setting up your match whether you want the match to be on those fundraising pages. So that is a condition that you can set up. Um, if you don't want it included, you can um, disable that when you're creating the match. So that's very easy for you to pick and choose what you want. Can I have more than one matching grant active at the same time? Yes, if you're fortunate enough to receive more than one matching grant, you can definitely have them start at the same time um, if you are, want to have sequential matching grants uh, and you want to have it go one after the, the other, you can also set that up um, on the platform. It just depends on what your organization wants. Oh no, I've entered the wrong matching grant or I've entered my matching grant wrong. What do I do? Um, so if your match is still active, it's still live, it's still going on, you can always go to your match manager and edit information about the match. So no need to worry, you can always go in and edit it. Um, if you need it deleted or you are have some confusion about your match, please feel free to reach our support team. We're more than happy to help edit anything or delete any matches that you've set up.
And lastly, uh, when you your match is live, you've set it up, you're all good to go, you wanna make sure that you're letting your donors know about your match. I've spoken so much about the impact of a matching grant, and you wanna make sure that you're relaying that to your donors about um, how it can be really beneficial for your organization. So make sure that you're posting about it on social media, you're letting them know when it's active, and um, you're as well emailing out to donors when it's live so that they can make a donation at that moment um, and know that their donation is going to be matched. Okay, so the next fundraising strategy we're going to be jumping into is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, also a very common strategy tool organizations utilize for giving challenges. So what is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising exactly? Well, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a technique where a nonprofit leverages existing supporters to bring in new supporters by asking them to create a fundraiser and ask their social network for donations. So you're asking someone within your network to fundraise for your organization. And the reason why this is such a popular fundraising strategy is because when you ask someone in your network to fundraise for you, that individual is reaching out to their friends and family, their larger network. So you are then receiving a new, uh, new donors that would maybe have never heard of your nonprofit or maybe would have never made a donation to your nonprofit. So that's why it's so popular. It allows you to receive new donors and get your organization out there and share the mission of your organization. But why would someone be interested in participating in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? Well, there are a lot of different reasons why people want to fundraise for organizations. One, this is a really great stewarding opportunity. Um, I mentioned that matching grant is one unique and different way that someone can help and support your nonprofit. Well, so is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Maybe someone can't make a large donation for your nonprofit. This is a different opportunity for them to, again, participate and help your organization. Um, it also, if your organization has constantly felt like you are asking your supporters the same ask, you're asking them to constantly make a donation and you wanna kind of back away from that, this is also a really great opportunity to provide a non-monetary ask to your donors and your supporters. Instead of making a large contribution, help us fundraise um, and create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. And also what I think is always really unique about peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers is that it also gives people an opportunity to share why they wanna fundraise for you. Um, by creating a fundraising page on the platform, individuals can share a story as to why they want to uh, support your organization. Why is it meaningful for them? Why should other donors make a donation? And so this is a really great opportunity to also get these stories and learn more about how your organization is meaningful to other individuals. Um, so who should you reach out to when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers? Uh, so you want to first consider everyone in your nonprofit's inner circle. So board members, volunteers, staff, if you do have a program, maybe program alumni, your social media followers, anyone that is already familiar with your nonprofit and the mission that you do, because again, you want people to feel very motivated and excited to participate. If you are also planning on creating um, a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, you wanna make it easy for participants. No one wants to sign up for something and feel that it's a very difficult or complicated thing to participate in. We have lots of great resources that you can utilize and send to donors, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry send to peer-to-peer -to -peer participants, uh, but you also want to maybe perhaps set up your own resources um, have a list of tips that you want to send out. There's an area where you can fill out templates. So you wanna make sure that it's really easy for people to participate. If you are planning on going down this route, um, one type of fundraising page we have available is a team fundraising page. 
So a team fundraising page, as you see in the image on the right hand side, is a group fundraising page that allows individuals to work individually, however, also work towards um, together towards a collective fundraising goal. Um, so as you see in the image, uh, you have a team page like this with an overall goal. However, you also have a leaderboard that is composed of everyone who's individually fundraising for the team. So this would be a really great opportunity for groups of people such as board of directors, again, staff, volunteers, people that are already segmented in a group. Very commonly, I've seen board members create team pages like this, um, and that's their kind of initiative for a giving challenge. Um, and why team fundraising pages utilize is because it generates more interest and it makes it a group effort. Everyone, yes, is fundraising independently. However, we're also working towards a collective goal and we're working it together. And you can choose whether you want this to be something competitive or if you don't want it to be competitive, again, you just want people to come together um, and do the best that they can. Each individual that is participating um, and that is listed in the leaderboard, they're gonna have their own page that they can send to their own friends and family. And they'll have their own page where they can share their own story, again, why they want to fundraise for your nonprofit, et cetera. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, that's one strategy that you can utilize for Cincinnati Gives. It's not required. However, that is a very common strategy that organizations utilize. Um, so now that we've gone through some of the fundraising strategies that you can use for Cincinnati Gives, we're gonna talk a little bit about marketing and promotion tips, things that you should consider uh, for Cincinnati Gives um, when it comes to letting your donors and supporters know about the challenge. So the first thing that you wanna think about is what is your story? Um, if you had a few minutes to tell someone what your work means to you, what would you say? So you really want to think about how is this year different than last year? There have been a lot of real world events happening and think about how that has impacted your nonprofit. How can a donation for your organization impact your mission um, and, and reach your goals that you're trying to set for your nonprofit? So you wanna think about that story. If you had a couple minutes to tell someone, what would you say? Um, and you wanna make sure that the story that you're sharing this year first is personal. Um, sh again, share a little bit about how your organization has been impacted and what are your goals set for 2021. You also wanna make sure that you are sharing a visual story, if possible, getting photos, videos, and also utilizing social media as an avenue to share parts of this story to your supporters and donors. When you're thinking about the story that you wanna give, you also wanna make sure that you're tailoring the ask into your story. Again, the impact or where your organization is currently at and how can donors help um, your organization reach uh, your goals, et cetera. So when it comes to email marketing, you wanna make sure that your emails are short and sweet. Everyone's going to be inundated with emails around this time of the year. So you wanna make sure that you're also having clear call to actions. You're telling the donors why you're reaching out to them. Donate now, help us today. You wanna to use strong language like that, that gets your um, call to action immediately. Before you send out your emails, always a good rule of thumb is to test out your emails and making sure that you're sending it out to other staff members, other colleagues, maybe you have a family member that you can quickly send it out to. Make sure that it looks good. Make sure that it's mobile friendly, that it looks good on your phone so that when you're sending it out to all of your donor base, that everything is um, good to go. Also a very important aspect when it comes to email marketing strategy is segmenting your email. When you're reaching out to donors and thinking about what you wanna ask them, you may wanna consider the different groups that you wanna reach out to and tailoring the ask to each group. Um, maybe what you say to a past donor that you're trying to retain again 
it's going to be different than maybe how what you're going to say to a volunteer or a current recurring donor. So you want to make sure that you have your group segmented and you know what groups you want to reach out to and what you want to say to them. Something that I spoke about in the beginning of this webinar is donor retention and our donor retention report. When it comes to email marketing, this is a really great group of people. It's a really great segment to reach out to. Um, as I said, we can, you can, if you participated in Cincinnati Gives previously last year, you can actually pull up a list and see donors that you haven't retained yet this year. Um, and so that's a really great segment of people to reach out to. And also consider again, the strong language and the call to action that you want to provide these donors. Language like give again, we know we can count on you, though that is verbiage that is really impactful for donors to read. Um, as well, if you are soliciting or asking for um, donors from, uh, or donations from donors that maybe have made a large donation in the past, you wanna think about personalizing your ask there. Oops, went a little too ahead of myself. Okay, so with social media marketing, um, you want to utilize the hashtag Cincinnati Gives um, so that you can be part of the larger conversation online. And if any donor or any organization or any individual selects that hashtag, that your nonprofit is coming up and people can see the campaign that you are running. If your organization or if your supporters are very responsive on social media, there are some organizations where their donors and their supporters are very active um, and you think that you may be overwhelmed during that time um, when the challenge is, think about appointing someone as a social media manager. Um, maybe that's a board member. If you have a volunteer, maybe it's someone you know that's just social media savvy. Um, utilize the resources you have and maybe ask them to post when the challenge has started or, and to keep track of your social media so that you can make sure that people are updated on your organization and where you are to your goal or the challenges. And as well, and always great, some always great advice we provide organizations is stay in your comfort zone and know the audience that you're reaching out to, your supporters and donors. Um, you don't have to utilize every single social media um, site. If your donors are not on TikTok, you don't have to be on TikTok. Um, if your donors are primarily on Facebook, utilize Facebook. Stay with what you know and what you feel comfortable with, um, and also where you know your donors are gonna go to get information and read information. So some social media content that is really um, that can be really helpful are videos on Facebook. So Facebook is a really great um, social media platform if you do have videos that you want to share. Um, what's really common now uh, are, especially with COVID and quarantining, um, a lot of organizations are doing um, Instagram Live and Facebook Live. Uh, they're doing really cool and unique uh, different strategies on Facebook and Instagram Live. They're holding Q and A's. They're doing Ask Me Anything. They're interviewing other people in nonprofit. It's really just another way for people to uh, engage with your organization and also get to know your organization in a different way. Um, so maybe that's something that you want to consider for Giving Tuesday. Uh, maybe think about um, an Instagram Live subject that you want to talk about or let people know where you are at your goal for that challenge. For images that you post on social media, think about strong and striking images that will get someone's attention. I think a common thing also nonprofits think is that uh, that images posted on social media have to be professional, um, and they don't have to be professional. What I mean by that, it doesn't have to be made by a professional photographer. If you have an image of your board members or an image of your staff, et cetera, those are all great images to share with people so that they can see the faces of your nonprofit. If you are looking for professional images to utilize um, for any marketing that you're doing, 
unsplash.com is a really great resource. Um, it allows you to use uh, professional photos um, without having to pay a stock image fee, etc. They're free to reuse for commercial reasons. So that's a really great resource if you do if you are looking for uh, professional photos. So once the challenge has completed, you've set up your matching grants, you've run your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, uh, you've emailed and you've posted all on social media. Well, your work isn't done yet. Uh, when the challenge ends, you still wanna make sure that you're following up with your donors and your supporters. How quickly and how genuinely donors are thanked for their donation predicts how quickly they are to donate to a nonprofit again. Um, this is a really important uh, time when it comes to the stewarding process and building a relationship with a donor. Um, so you wanna make sure that after Cincinnati gives or after the donor has made their donation, that you're thanking the donors for the impact that they made for your organization. If you've won a prize, uh, if you've um, won a challenge, let them know that uh, what, what their donation has helped do for you. Um, so you wanna send a thank you email within 24 hours. We automatically send a tax receipt that can include a thank you message in there if you've added that through the platform. But if, this is, if there's a large donor that you wanna thank, it's always great to send a personal um, follow-up email as well. If there are people that are helping you out in a non-monetary way, it's also a great opportunity to thank those people with a call or maybe a letter, thanking them for volunteering or setting up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, and also asking questions that could be helpful for next year, such as, how did you hear about our campaign? How would you like to be involved with our organization? How do you think it went, et cetera? So, as I just mentioned, if you've won any prizes at the end or you've won any challenges, uh, close the loop and share your results on social media, as well as sending an email to your donors, letting them know how they've helped your organization. If you've told a specific story, um, you know, on your profile and through your marketing, uh, it's really great a couple of weeks after the challenge to update people on the story you've show, you've told. Maybe if there's any news on, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, any news on the story that you've told, uh, you know, if you're trying to, um, you know, raise money to build something or you're raising money for a program, letting people know any updates on um, those projects that you're working on. And of course, this is also a really great opportunity to talk about 2021. It's really crazy we're at this point to talk about 2021. However, this is also a great opportunity to let people know what you have in the horizon and how they you know, can support your organization in 2021. Some resources that are available for your nonprofit if you have any further questions. Of course, the toolkit will provide this webinar and our last webinar. This will be added after um, this webinar has finished. We have a lot of great FAQs, basic how-tos, templates, et cetera. So please definitely check out the toolkit. And of course, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to contact us at support at mightycause.com. We're always here to help and answer any questions that anyone has. Um, so please reach out to us if you do. So I'm going to leave the last couple of minutes for questions. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to utilize the GoToWebinar control panel um, and you can ask your questions there. So one question that we have is about offline donations. Uh, so if you do have an offline donation, so a donor that makes a donation via check or cash, um, as I mentioned, you can add that in your own page metrics. Um, so you could do that through your donations report. There's an add offline donation button. However, please note that offline those donations do not count towards the leaderboard. So you will see a discrepancy between your leaderboard total and 
the total that you have in your metrics because that donation is not going to be counted towards it. So it's just something to be aware of. Okay, so another question, um, how we will receive reports and how much donor information can we capture? That's a really great question. So we provide reports um, ongoing. So you have access to your report anytime. Um, you would have to just log into your administrative email, head over to your organization page and dashboard, and there is an area called reports and donations where you can see immediately any donation that you've received through the platform. As well, if you are set up as an administrator, uh, you will receive email notifications when a donation has been made. Um, in regards to the information that we capture, uh, so on the report, when you look at it, you're going to see the name of the donor, the date, the amount, and if you do have fundraising pages uh, connected to your nonprofit, then you're going to see where that donation was made, which fundraiser. Um, if you want more information, you can enable to collect more information within your checkout flow. So if you want to collect address or phone number, you can choose to collect that information in the checkout flow. And then that information is provided to you in a downloadable report in a spreadsheet. So you could click download and then the spreadsheet that is downloaded will have additional information. Um, so the report that's online is really supposed to give you a quick glance. The downloadable report will provide you all of the details. And as well, if you have entered offline donations, um, then you're going to have another report open up that is just for offline donations. Uh, are there Google Analytic type reports available to help us understand the traffic to our pages? Uh, within the overview of your organization dashboard, we do provide you stats on profile visits and profile views. So you do have some sort of analytics on um, how many people are actually coming to your organization profile. However, that's really the extent of um, analytics when it comes to people coming onto your site and how they're engaging, et cetera. So again, that's available in the overview section. Okay, another question. Um, I'm wondering how the funds are dispersed to the organization. What is timing and does it come through as a direct deposit? Also a really great question. Uh, so on the platform, there are two disbursement methods available, either check disbursements or direct deposit EFT. Uh, with check disbursements, uh, they are sent once a month on the 10th and they will include donations from the previous month. So for example, if an organization receives a donation today, you're not gonna see, receive those funds until November 10th. Um, and that will be emailed out to the legal mailing address we have on file from the IRS. Uh, as well, there is a $5 service fee that we do have for check disbursements. So we always highly recommend to set up direct deposit because there is no service fee for uh, EFT or direct deposit disbursements. For direct deposit disbursements, that uh, we disperse funds twice a month on the 10th and the 25th. And you can set up EFT on your organization dashboard in settings and disbursement settings. So uh, how, do I, um, how do I see a breakdown of my disbursement? Uh, so if you have any questions about the disbursement that you've received, well, when a disbursement is sent out, we always email the administrator of the nonprofit and let them know that we've sent out a disbursement. And typically that email will have a link to a disbursement breakdown. However, that breakdown is also available anytime to you in the report section of your dashboard. Um, again, reports, and then there's a subsection called disbursement reports. And if, if, if you select the disbursement that you wanna see further, there's actually a comprehensive breakdown that will tell you exactly 
your transaction fees, your total, and then how um, the disbursement total you received, how that came about. Any other final questions? Of course, you can always reach out to our support team if anything comes about um, after this. We'll also, as I mentioned, add this webinar to uh, the toolkit, but any other final questions any organization has? Okay, I don't think we're getting any further questions. So I'm gonna end the webinar right here. I appreciate everyone who's attended. Um, I hope this was helpful for everyone. Please let us know if you do have any follow-up questions and good luck with fundraising for Cincinnati Gives. Thank you so much. Have a great day.